we're four years into the Global Health Network, and um, we've, you know, the process map is just the latest resource that's on there. Um, we designed it with, with two things in mind, really. First of all, it's a step-by-step -step, um, system to show people how to set up a study. So our thinking here was that if you're a would-be researcher in the middle of the Congo, wanting to run a straightforward study, that you could navigate your way through this and just understand every single thing you need to do. And that it's not too onerous, it's not too frightening. And then you click on each step and it gives you the information and the tools and support and training, but also helps you find other people so you can ask a question and you can find experts and peers who will help you. So it's supposed to be a step-by-step -step way for people to be reassured that it's not too difficult to do research and that it's really accessible to everybody. But the other thing that Process Map does is it's like a layer on top of the glo whole global health network because we've, we've been going for four years now and there's so much on there. It's, it's just fantastic. We've had research groups from all around the world um, in all sorts of settings, share templates, tools, resources. We've got all these training courses. And so it's, it's quite hard to find things. So by putting this process map on top, it means that people can go on very quickly and get to exactly what they need. So we just come back to this need for more local and um, relevant research to happen in developing countries. And I just want to give you a quick example. Um, we're running a study right now um, in, in Ethiopia. Um, and this came about because a group of, um, of health workers in, in Ethiopia were working on um, a disease that's caused by farmers um, who, who walk around barefoot, farm their land barefoot, and they get um, soil particles go up into the lymphatic system and cause this terrible swelling. And the, um, the, it's completely debilitating. They get huge swollen limbs and they hide away. It's huge stigma and they can't earn any money and feed their families. And it was, a, it was just an uncharacterized and unknown disease that the, a group of researchers found out about. Um, and then the same group worked out that you could get rid of this swelling by a really straightforward system of bandaging and hygiene practice, a sort of six-month program, which would completely get the swelling down, enable them to wear shoes, and get them back to a normal life. So they worked this out. But the problem was then convincing the Ethiopian government to put this into practice in health clinics across Ethiopia. There's probably at least a million people that suffer from this. It's a, it's a hidden, neglected disease. And so they wanted to do a clinical trial. And they've now never done a clinical trial before. They didn't have the first idea of where to start. So through the Global Health Network, um, this group um, worked with the Kenyan group that Ken will tell you more about in a moment. And the Kenyan um, researchers are working closely with the Ethiopian health workers to teach them how to do research, how to, re how to design the forms, how to make it operate on the ground, doing all the training that you need to do to do a good quality study. So that's that sharing between Ethiopia and, and Kenya to make a good practical trial happen. So what we want to talk about this morning is this concept of sharing and, and helping and support researchers in low-income settings but also harnessing digital technology to do that and, and making it um, a reality. So we've got this great panel um, that I'd like to introduce you to that are going to take us through some of their experiences and, and what they've been involved with. Um, Baba Tunde um, is a colleague that I've known for a very long time and works in West Africa and is going to talk about the realities of, of being a researcher from, from that region. Um, Ken leads the laboratory in Kenya and has this fantastic centre of excellence that he leads. But Ken spends a lot of his time now working with um, groups who have never undertaken research, encouraging and supporting them to conduct research quality laboratory assays. Abba, um, we're very grateful. She's come all over from the WHO this morning just for this. Um, and she leads the ethics research group at the World Health Organization and is going to talk about what the WHO is trying to do to um, support locally led research. Um, and we have Roger, which is completely different. Um, Roger works in, um, in a completely different sector, but uses digital technology um, to network and share in the same concept. So it's going to be fantastic to hear what he thinks about what we're trying to do and learn from some of his experiences. Ben Goldacre, who, who's, um, as I'm sure most of you know, is very passionate about the need for more evidence and data and making clinical trials more accessible and simple. Um, so it just leads me to introduce our chair, who's Rosanna Peeling from the London School. Um, Rosanna leads the International Diagnostic Centre, which is all about sharing and, and getting research undertaken in their settings where there's never normally research. 